And then third, um, the way that it's painted in his accounting of it, and not so much contradict some of the claims that he made, but have you see it differently, because the truth is that religion doesn't, by and large, make scientific claims. And it ought not to be evaluated scientifically. And Popper, when he said the claims couldn't be falsified, he didn't say they weren't meaningful claims. He said they weren't scientific claims. But Popper allowed all sorts of claims, including his own sociological claims, historical claims can't be falsified, philosophical claims can't be falsified. You and I live all the time on ground that can't be falsified. I can't falsify your reason for getting up this morning. I can't falsify the statement that life is beautiful or life is not beautiful. Yet who would say on that account that that isn't an important and in fact more important than any specific scientific claim that you could make about how close you are genetically to a chimpanzee? Because you and I both know that that isn't the ground on which human beings live. Part of what happens in a religious system is that religions have been filtered through very imperfect creatures, human beings. And Mr. Hitchens makes the incorrect claim that religions say you wouldn't know right from wrong if this book didn't come down from heaven and tell you about right from wrong. If you read the book, you would know that the book doesn't say that. In fact, what happens to the first brothers in human history, Cain and Abel, one kills the other. And God comes down and says to Cain, you did a terrible thing, and you're going to be punished. Now, it's clear that Cain hasn't read the book that he appears at the beginning of. So how is it that God condemns Cain? Because it is assumed in every religious tradition that you have an innate moral sense. Absolutely. No religion claims you don't know right from wrong until I tell you exactly what the book says. The difference is that what religion does claim is now morality is woven into the fabric of the universe. It is not the invention of you accidents of ancient chemistry. Because if what Mr. Hitchens says is true and there is no God and there is no overarching spirit, then everything that we call right and wrong is what we decide is right and wrong. It can't come from anywhere else. It doesn't come from God. It comes from the random evolutionary pressures that created us, and as you know, evolution is, in fact, a theory of the gaps. That is, you find a niche in nature, you fill it through random mutations and natural selection, and then you get this creature about whom I have two very serious questions. First of all, what warrant does that creature have for his or her morality? It's not that you don't know what moral is. But why should you do it if you don't wish to? Why, since I'm taking a flight early tomorrow morning, why should I leave a tip in my hotel room? It impoverishes me. I'm never going to meet the person who cleaned my hotel room. I don't see any good reason to do it if I don't want to. Why should I do something against my own interest if I really don't want to? Religion, in part, is a system that tells you that things that are against your interest should be done because even though they may be against your interest, they are fulfilling of your destiny and your purpose in this world. And that's what sacred books are intending at bottom to teach. And the idea is not merely that these books come along to try to encourage people to be good, although I'll get back to goodness in a second but also because you all have an intuition and, in fact, a faculty called consciousness that raises you above what it is to be purely material. It's not that human beings are just synapses. You can conceive of time, of history, of what was and what will be. You have dreams and aspirations and hopes that are non-material and, in fact, almost every great philosopher in history from Aristotle to Plato to Hegel to Kant, they all believed that the fundamental constituent of reality was spiritual, not material. You have to be a thoroughgoing materialist and believe that there is nothing but stuff to think that talk of spirit is vaporous nonsense. But right now, all of you are having ideas. And even if ideas are lodged in the brain, they're not the same as the brain. 
They are, in fact, spiritual entities, non-material entities. You have an intuition that something exists that is more than stuff. And religion enshrines that intuition by saying that that ultimately points to something greater than ourselves, not something physical that you can't see. That's what I began with. It's not that God, you know, people say God is invisible. God's not invisible. It's not like if you put a hat on God, you'd see God go down the street, right? God is intangible, which is different. It's almost like light. You can't see light, but I can see you, more or less, because there's light in the room. The same idea. We see each other because there is God, and in fact, by the way, you know, in my tradition and in all the monotheist traditions to a great extent, the principal evidence of God in this world is in the eyes of the person sitting next to you. That's where you look to see God. Now, you might believe when you look into the eyes of someone you love, you might believe that what you're seeing is a pure contrivance of matter. That there's nothing spiritual there, that that's all an illusion. But I don't believe it. And I don't think you should believe it. And that sense that we're more than bodies. Mr. Hitchens said earlier, not here, but when we were talking earlier, he said, it's not that we have bodies, it's that we are bodies. Yes, we are bodies, but we are not only bodies. And the same thing is true with religion. Religion is a set of laws, some good, some bad, but it's not only laws. It's an exhortation to people to be better. And sometimes religion does this very badly. I'm sure tonight we will get a catalog of all religion's ills, but it's not as though when you suck religion out of the world, you get a better human being. The 20th century was an experiment in expelling religion from the world. Began, by the way, in the French Revolution, which was the first total war, in the words of one historian. And let me just remind you of what happens when you suck religion out of the world. You get Stalin, and Mao, and Hitler, and Pol Pot, and Kim Il-jung, and Robert Mugabe, and Idi Amin, do I have to go on? It's not as though when you expel religion, all of a sudden you get goodness. People, as every religion tells us in one way or another, are not all good. They're just not. As I'm very fond of saying to my students all the time, if you think people are basically good, you should go visit a playground. Because what happens when a new kid comes on the playground? Do the other kids go, oh, let us embrace this new child <laughs> and share our toys with him? What happens when a new kid comes into class? Does everybody say, oh, let's share our notes with the new kid? No. Because we are very mixed and naughty and shadow and dark and light creatures. And religion has very difficult stuff to work with. And because religion gets refracted through human beings in this world, because after all, religion isn't for God, it's for us, often it will get played out in ways that are ugly and dark and cruel. No doubt about it. The question, though, is not whether religious people ever do bad things or whether people who have no religion ever do good things. Of course they do. Some of the nicest people I know have no religion, and some of the nastiest people I know claim to be religious. The question is, is there a better system in this world for encouraging people to goodness? You'll say moral theory, but let me just ask a question. I'm in a university campus. Do you think your professor of ethics is necessarily nicer than your professor of engineering? Now, maybe yours is. I'm glad. But it's not necessarily true. I don't think as a class, philosophers or, or, or moralists tend to be any better than anyone else. And the difference in religion is when you point to a religious person who's bad, you get upset about it, don't you? You say, when a politician does something wrong, or say a sports figure, just, I don't know why, um, but <laughs> does something wrong, you go, oh, I expect that. But when a clergyman does, everyone gets upset. Not you. <laughs> I'm gonna test that theory. I'm gonna do something really rotten. No, but the, but why is it that you get upset? Because you assume that they adhere to a standard that they violated. Their very hypocrisy is a tribute to the idea that they actually do have a standard, and they do care, and it does matter to them. And that's why 